Summary of Year of Wonders by Geraldine Brooks The story of Year of Wonders starts in autumn of 1666. Anna Frith, the main character, watches the harvesting process with a heavy heart as farmers bring bruised apples to the rectory. Anna cleans the home of the priest, Michael Montpellion. She thinks about how fall used to mean good harvests and safety for the winter, but now it only makes her realize how much the village has lost its normal rhythm. She doesn't say the name of the plague, but she gives hints about what kind of disaster it was that killed so many people, made her question her own health, and caused Montpellier to lose it, even though she is very loyal and protective of her. Elizabeth Bradford smugly walks into the house and tells Anna and Montpellier that her mother is having a tumor, and she needs help. They don't want to help her because her family left town during the plague without caring about what would happen to the town. In a strange twist, Montpellier tells Elizabeth that she should pray to God for help, but that God is not a good listener. Then he drops a Bible on the floor on purpose, which shocks Anna with his disrespectful behavior. The story takes place in the spring of 1665, which is 15 years ago. Anna takes in the trainee tailor George Vickcars as a boarder because she is short on money after her husband died in a mining accident. George turns out to be nice and interesting. He plays with Anna's boys, Jamie and Tom, and tells her stories about London. Eventually, he asks Anna to marry him, and she thinks about saying yes. But before she can decide, he gets a strange, strong fever that kills him in just a few days. George thinks that bolts of cloth sent from London gave him the plague, so he tells Anna to burn the cloth and everything else he owns. But the locals won't give up the clothes they ordered from George, which makes sure the plague quickly spreads through the town. While Anna is serving dinner at Bradford Hall, she hears a visitor from London talking about how cruel it is that the plague is spreading in London. After a few weeks of peace, Anna's neighbors, the Hadfields, lose their children to the plague and die quickly. Jamie and Tom also die soon after. Anna stumbles through her daily jobs because she is so upset about losing them that she doesn't realize the plague is spreading through the town. One night, she is looking for a lost sheep when she comes across a group of locals beating up M.E.M. Gaudai because they think she is a witch who caused the plague. Anna tries to protect M.E.M., but the crowd dunks her in the lake anyway. This was a superstitious way to find out if a woman was a witch. Ennis, M.E.M.'s niece, comes along and saves her from drowning, but the crazy crowd hangs her instead. Montpellier shows up and scolds the crowd for what they did, but the damage has already been done. M.E.M. and Ennis, the only people in the city who knew anything about medicine, have died. As more people get sick, Montpellier is afraid that it will spread to other towns and turn into an epidemic in the region or even the country. In an emotional and charismatic speech, he persuades the locals that the disaster is a test from God and that they should stay away from other people until the plague is over. The Bradfords are the only ones who don't agree, so they use their money and power to get away from Eam. As the wife of the priest, Eleanor Montpellier's job is to take care of sick parishioners. As the plague spreads and the work gets harder, she hires Anna to help her. Anna gives birth to Mary Daniel's baby even though she has never done it before. After that, she becomes the town's doctor and nurse. Almost everyone who gets the plague does die, though, and Anna and Eleanor can only try to make their pain go away. The people act crazy because they are too stressed out from fear and grief. Anna finds out that some people are buying charms from someone who says they are any ghost. At the same time, Anna is trying to dull the pain of losing her boys by taking large amounts of poppy oil, which is an opiate. She goes back to Ennis and M.E.M.'s garden with Eleanor in the hopes of learning some of their old herb knowledge again so that they can treat the plague better. As their friendship grows, Eleanor tells Anna that she had an affair before she got married as a teenager, which led to an unplanned pregnancy that she stopped by having an abortion herself. She can't have children now because of this. Her husband is the only one who knows the whole story of her sins and she thinks it's very kind of him to marry her even though other people would probably think her past is bad. At the same time, the town sexton passes away from being too tired to dig any more graves. Anna talks her dad, Josiah, or Joss, 
into becoming the new gravedigger. His needy neighbors, on the other hand, pay him crazy amounts of money to bury their dead, and he sometimes uses the chaos to steal things from people's homes. He finally tries to rob Christopher Onwin's house by burying the sick but mostly healthy Christopher Onwin alive. He is charged with theft by the Miners' Union, which is Eames' only official government body, and given the punishment of being chained to Onwin's mine. In this case, the sentence is very harsh but common. After a few hours of pain, someone from the criminal's family will come and take the knife away. But Afra, Josiah's wife, is too busy taking care of her sick children to get him or call for help. Josiah dies a horrible death from being outside in the weather. Afra thinks Anna killed her husband and makes Anna go with her to get his body back, even though it looks terrible. Anna says that more than half of the people who lived in Eme have died and that village life is almost completely broken up. A lot of work and trades go unchecked, and people don't meet in public because they're afraid of getting sick. More and more people in the village are buying fake charms from the mystery ghost, and John and Yurith Gordon start beating themselves to stop God from punishing them. Mompelian quickly stops the Gordons from spreading what he sees as extreme right-wing ideas to the rest of the locals. At the same time, he severely scolds a young woman named Jane Martin for drinking and fornicating to deal with her grief, calling her a whore and a sinner against God. Mompelian tells the town that they need to burn most of their things as a gift to God and to get rid of any living things that could spread disease. Rand Rigney and Robert Snee show up with Afra, who they found selling fake charms, while everyone else is getting ready for the blaze. Everyone is mad at her for taking advantage of their fear, and they all agree that she should be put on trial the next day. But Brand and Robert lock her in a sewer pit overnight, and the experience drives her crazy. At that point, it doesn't make sense to hold a hearing. Faith, Afra's only surviving child, dies of the plague, and Afra, who has lost her mind, won't let the body be buried. Nobody is getting the plague anymore, and Mompelian holds a Thanksgiving service one Sunday because his wife asked him to. In the middle of everyone praying for safety in a field, Afra shows up fully crazy with a knife and her daughter's body on her back. She kills Eleanor by cutting her throat when Mompelian and Eleanor try to calm her. The story picks up in fall, where the prologue left off. Mompelian has lost his faith in God and, it seems, his will to live since his wife died. Anna takes care of him to take her mind off of how sad she is. In the end, they have sex because they are both lonely and want to feel better. Afterward, though, he admits that he refused to have sex with Eleanor while they were married to make up for the sins of having sex before marriage and having an abortion. Anna thinks Eleanor is acting crazy and badly, which makes her feel guilty and regretful for a longer time than she needs to. Anna runs into Elizabeth Bradford as she is leaving the church. Elizabeth tells Anna that her mother doesn't have a tumor but is about to give birth to an unborn child and is in danger of dying. When Anna goes to Bradford Hall, she gives birth to the baby and saves both her own and and Bradford's lives. Elizabeth wants to kill the baby to hide the shame of having a child outside of marriage, but Anna stops her and agrees to leave town with the baby to hide where it came from. Before she leaves Eam, she meets Mompelian. He tries to forgive her but fails, but he gives her his horse to help her get away. In the ending, Anna has moved to Oran, Algeria, a Muslim city. She finds a famous doctor named Ahmed Bey and talks him into making her his student and, in name only, his wife so she can live with him. Since science and medicine are more advanced in the Arab world than in England, Anna learns how to be a nurse and gets an education in medicine. She also gains personal freedom and a sense of purpose that help her believe in God again. She names in Bradford's baby Aisha, which means life in Arabic, and raises her along with her own daughter, Eleanor, who she had with Mompelian and names after her friend. About the author. Brooks was born in the United States to an American father and an Australian mother. He grew up in a suburb of Sydney. She worked as a reporter for newspapers in Australia after going to the University of Sydney. Eventually, she went to New York and graduated from the Columbia School of Journalism. After that, 
she started working for American magazines like The Wall Street Journal and The New Yorker. During the 1990s, she covered political events in Africa, the Balkans, and the Middle East, often with her husband, who is also a writer. Nine Parts of Desire, Brooks's first non-fiction book, came out in 1994. Year of Wonders, her first novel, came out in 2001. Brooks wrote many of her novels based on facts she learned about history while working as a reporter. Brooks and her family live in Massachusetts. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.